I have hit the button. Okay. Let me make sure we've got Twitch audio. Yeah, that'll do it. We're good. Okay. It's episode three. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, Hello, everyone. Welcome to the... Th Sorry, I didn't have all that. I didn't record yet. either. Okay. <laughs> I didn't record glad, either. Don't worry. Glad, glad I'm not the only one. Let me pop out the... Ah, wait, it doesn't matter. Nobody chats. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Three, okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third episode on the Short Explanations Security Podcast. My name is Hyam. Tom is there. And we just want to say welcome. Anything? Uh, wanna, yeah, that's it. Know? Good show. Thanks for okay. showing up. Appreciate well, it. <laughs> Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> so, look, we've we've... I want to say that we've been very happy with how the episodes of the the last episode turned out. I'm really happy about how the websites turned out. Um, I did a 503, I think it was, redirect from the old network over. But the problem is, and we didn't say it, 301. The problem is we ha you have to actually subscribe to the new podcast. So I did a test audio and said, hey, move over. And it didn't post here or there or posted there but it didn't come through pocket cast or whatever it is so if you i don't know if you have a water cooler chat about our podcast but everyone you need to resubscribe to the short explanations podcast and that and that's how we're going to do it moving forward so we do need your help in spreading the promotion because i think we did lose at least a significant amount of the subscribers because they're not moving unless they click the button so please tell people but we're happy you're here and you're listening to us and i think we have a good show people are talking about what happened on december 22nd which is is festivus eve for all those who celebrate festivus which i am one of however unfortunately one of the password managers that we've 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 recommended in the past very long ago uh last pass not suffered another breach but came and told us some really bad news the worst possible news ever which is their um their their encrypted vaults have disappeared and uh an attacker got them and after, I mean, it's been two weeks now, so we've had some more thinking and self uh, introspection and all that good stuff, but I think it's a problem, and I'm going to let Tom handle why it's a problem, and hopefully we'll figure out what to do and what to tell you to do at the end. Yeah, so if you're looking for the TLDR, and, and we'll, we'll get into some of the technical details here, so don't worry. Um, the, the TLDR is, hey... If you store passwords in LastPass, you should probably go first use a different password manager. Uh, I think we're we're safe recommending Bitwarden at this point in time. Uh, so move over your LastPass vault. Uh, I, I would not keep it at LastPass. Um, and go through and change every password, or at the very least, change the ones you care about. Um, because there, there is a non-zero chance that someone's going to crack open one of these vaults. They're still protected by your master password, but we'll get into why that's a little sketchy too. Um, but they're still, they're still protected by your master password, but just in case your master password is bad, or especially if your master password is bad, um, yeah, those, those passwords could be up for grabs as soon as somebody takes a look and tries to crack it. Um... So that's your TLDR. Move away from LastPass. Import your vault into Bitwarden. LastPass has a nice export. Bitwarden has a nice import. Should be fairly trivial unless you've got a bunch of stuff in secure notes. You might have to fiddle with the CSV files a bit. I did, um, but it's not too terrible, honestly. Um, we'll get there. We did actually do an episode on how to do this or talk mm -hmm. about this. So we, we have recommended Bitwarden. Uh, I think for two or three years now. It's been a long time. Um, we, I moved years and years and years ago 
right when LastPass started their payment structure. And the advice was, if you're in LastPass and you were happy with LastPass, just pay them. It's worth it. Don't don't move. If you don't want to pay them or you're trying to convince someone to pay them, look at Bitwarden and start slowly. So in six months, eight months, a year, you're, you, you have a good thing to do. And that's what I did. And I'm really happy with Bitwarden. And that's not to say there's others out there that are not good. But I... I wanted to say that that last you should stick with LastPass. They disclosed properly. They did everything they should have done, but turns out they didn't. And we'll get there in a second. But I wouldn't say go right now, stop the podcast, and change all your passwords. What I would do is figure out what passwords you you have and work on changing the ones that are mission critical, like your banking passwords, your email. Um, your your cell phone because of sim swap attacks which are not common but the infosec people like to talk about this like everyone does this but your your cell phone provider and once you get those done then you can take it a little easy for a little bit and then start moving slowly so and you can have both uh things open at the same time so as you get to one you can put it in and do that so yeah, use yes. use the Sorry. export functions in LastPass. Use the import functions in Bitwarden. Don't open them side by side and copy paste. Like you can, there's nothing wrong with that. You're not going to break anything. It's just going to take forever. If you do the export and then the import, even though it might be a little weird because you know most people don't export their password vaults all that often, um, it, it'll save you time in the long run. Just trust me, it's way easier. So mission critical passwords. We're talking like bank accounts, like like you were saying. Cell phones, your your cell phone account, absolutely make sure that's nice and fresh. Luckily, you're using a password manager, so you can just say, hey, generate me a new one, and you're fine. Um, Google accounts, super important. Apple accounts, super important. The stuff that you use on a daily basis that you know, hey, if I lost access to this account, it would be a bad day for me, change that stuff. Um, and yeah, that's that's really about it. So... To jump into kind of the nitty gritty technical details, um, I, I guess we just start from the top. So LastPass had a feature um, and it was absolutely put in as a feature um, that allowed you to change your password based key derivation function rounds. So what this means, uh, the the I, I'm always just breaking the uh, PBKDF acronym. I have to look it up every time. It's password-based key derivation functions. So what this thing does is it literally takes a password and it turns it into whatever length encryption key you need. Because AES works on uh, a, a few different sizes of keys. Um, the most common one in use today is 256. It's 256 bytes. And that is your cryptographic key. That is the thing used inside of AES to actually turn your plain text data into encrypted data that people can't read without that key. What this one does is just like the name suggests, it takes whatever password you have, it does some cryptographic magic and, you know, mangling data and mushing things around to get you at the end an AES key. So what's cool about password-based key derivation functions and also terrifying is that you can select the number of rounds. So like everything in computer security, it's a constant arm race to keep ahead of attackers, new technologies, uh, faster uh, things that are designed to crack hashes. You know, like most uh, ASIC miners for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency, they're literally cracking hashes. And that's why they've gotten so fast and so powerful so quickly. There's money on the line. Um, so unfortunately, PBKDF allows you to set a number of rounds that it's going to shove your password through to get that key at the end. More means it's going to take a lot longer and it's going to be a lot harder to reverse that process. Not impossible, right? Like with a long enough geologic time frame, you can crack anything. 
you might be dead by like long dead by the time you crack it, but it's still possible, right? So more iterations means more security generally. So LastPass started with a pretty low value for their iterations. Um, this is probably a bad. Uh, it the looks first like one I, was five thousand. I thought the first one was five hundred. Well, maybe it's it, even lower. It went, but... it went from one to five hundred, according to these notes, in twenty twelve. Well, my my problem here's my problem. My problem is is that the, the numbers we're talking about five five hundred, five thousand, fifty thousand, a hundred thousand. Those shouldn't be numbers. Like your key derivation function should be one, two, three. Let them stand for a thousand or whatever it is. Like, ooh, mine's a hundred thousand, yours is a hundred and one thousand. Does that mean it like what does it matter over fifty thousand? And it does. It really, really does. But that number, that that's a bad, like optic forward facing number to have to explain to people. I agree. I, I totally agree. Um, the fact that LastPass even exposed this feature to users is a little concerning. Um, I, I did end up mentioning this in a talk about computer security and user interface um, or user experience um, and how LastPass got a whole lot of things right, but exposing options that a user could accidentally tune too low and hurt themselves with was hugely concerning. Now, at the time, it seemed they had decent defaults. I really didn't think much of it. And usually with these things, when like you decide to deprecate certain types of encryption, which we'll get to in a minute, or when you realize, oh, hey, all of these ASIC miners are blowing up SHA-1 hashes, uh, let's go ahead and, and bump these values up. What happens, or what should happen, uh, is that the next time a user decrypts their vault, you can look at like some metadata or even just analyze the fields and say, oh yeah, okay, so this vault, we unlocked it with 5,000. We now know that like 100,000 is probably better, maybe even more, maybe 300,000. So let's go ahead and we'll bump that number up for you and re-encrypt your vault. So what that means on the user side is you, all you have to do is log in and in the background, the LastPass browser extension is just doing its magic to take your, your plain text stuff that just unlocked and re-encrypt it with the new standards and the higher security. LastPass didn't do that. And they also were encrypting passwords with electronic codebook, AES ECB. Um, so ECB is deprecated. It is long, long dead because, frankly, it's bad at security. Um, you can you can do known plain text attacks with it. So when you encrypt the same data with the same key, you get the same output, which is really bad because let's say you have a, a sentence or a common phrase or a song lyric or something, and somebody can go and encrypt that common thing or that common word with a bunch of different keys. Eventually you will stumble upon things that look similar and you can kind of use that as a way to reverse engineer the entire thing. It's called a known plain text attack. I'm probably explaining it fairly poorly, and I apologize for that. But if you would like a better explanation, you can join our signal group and I will talk your ear off about AES. Um, so luckily, you know, the powers that be and very many cryptographers contributing a whole insane amount of time uh, made a bunch of different modes for AES, and one of them... CBC, Cypher Block Chaining, uses something called an IV. Uh, this is an initialization vector. Basically, it means it's a, a big prime number, or just a big unique number that you, you shove into the front of the thing. And then every time you encrypt data, as long as the EV changes uh, between those encryption rounds, then you're not going to have a known plain text attack. It's basically a way of even further scrambling the data in the process of encrypting it. So when LastPass stored certain fields and, and their encrypted fields were stored using electronic codebook, they could have technically said in the client, okay, when the user unlocks their vault, 
if these things were using the this previous flag or if they weren't flagged for an encryption type at all, like if it was just the default, go ahead and re-encrypt it with AES CBC and we'll call it good. We'll just upgrade everybody's encryption transparently. You can even like put like digital check boxes next to all the fields, right? Okay, we did all these and then the user closed the app so we couldn't do anymore, but we'll, we'll carry on from where we left off. They didn't do that. Instead, they just left the things that were initially encrypted with ECB as encrypted with ECB. I don't know if this was an oversight. I don't know if it was, I, I don't want to call it laziness. Um, maybe there was a, a deadline or something, but the, the fact remains that they never encrypted values that were poorly encrypted in the first place. And that's pretty terrible. The other thing that LastPass users are now dealing with is that only certain fields in the LastPass vault were encrypted. Now, don't freak out. It doesn't mean that all of your stuff is plain text. What it generally means is that the names of items and the URLs were not encrypted. So usernames, passwords, notes fields, like the form filling stuff, credit card information, all that stuff, all that is encrypted. But when it comes to URLs, if somebody's in there specifically trying to attack, let's say, Twitter accounts, then they could go through a vault and pick out just the Twitter accounts without having to crack the master password. They can just grab the encrypted blob and say, okay, we're not going to attack the whole thing because there's a master password there. Instead, we're going to attack just this one entry because that's the thing we're going after today. We want Twitter accounts. We now have a pile of Twitter accounts. And because of the way that LastPass kind of messed up their encryption initially, uh, what that means is now they're fighting AES ECB. They're fighting Electronic Codebook. They're fighting a thing that was already deprecated for safety issues. And it's just going to make it a lot easier to get those passwords. I mean, the short answer is LastPass was good whatever, 10 years ago when we said it, the idea was awesome. And then we talked about how they switched, they got bought out by Log Me In, which, which I'm still salty about Hamachi, if you remember that. And just Log Me not being a good, yes, not being a good steward of companies that they bought. And then, then the really thing that hurt me was, oh, we're going to move to a one device model unless you pay. So you can have it on your phone or your computer, but you can't have it on both. And, and that, that's clearly the free tier to test it out, not the free tier to actually use. It's unusable that way. And so we said, you know what? We have to find something free. Here's the problem. The problem is not what happened to LastPass. The problem is getting people to use a password manager. And, and being the show here, we want to say, if the answer is LastPass or no password manager, absolutely stay with LastPass. LastPass is fine in this case something bad happened i'm sure now they're going to change all their stuff i'm sure in the next release everything's going to hopefully be changed we don't know um after they figure out what's going on but if your choices are i'm going to still keep the post-it note under the keyboard for all my passwords or you hope that you get more dogs to name your dog your passwords differently get a password manager and and we we the two big ones if you want there are one password and uh, Bitwarden. And we recommend Bitwarden mainly because the free tier is free. And I think the only differences are are two factor with like a YubiKey. Like if you want a six digit uh, TOTP um, a Google Authenticator type, that's free. But if you want a YubiKey or you want something else, that's paid for. And the other thing that's paid for that's awesome is it will put in your two factor codes. So you can have a list of those right in the app. So you don't have to go back to your phone. And the other thing is uh, sharing. So if you, ha you buy your family account, you can share with other people. Um, don't share your Netflix password, but presumably you could for your devices in your house. So your wife can log into the same TV somewhere in your house. Uh, but yes, you can share that with people. And then they have some other things like you're the admin. You can do legacy contacts, which is all nice. But if the choices are to to not have a password manager because you're high and mighty, that's don't do that. Keep LastPass. Uh, I I did want to talk about somebody said 
well, I don't want to pay. That is a very valid concern. And and people don't want to pay. I I pay forty dollars to Bitwarden, but forty dollars a year for a password manager is is really steep unless you know what you're dealing with and everything else. So so like I said, Bitwarden has a free personal account. That's excellent. Um if you have to, I don't recommend it, not for security reasons, but uh, Chrome or Firefox or uh, OS uh, OS 10 key, uh, Mac OS Keychain. I guess Google has their own password manager. I guess that's through Chrome. But having the browser store at least some of that, just it, it's I don't like it, but that's not bad advice because you can log in. You're going to log into Chrome anyway, and it's going to bring those passwords and it's going to sync it. You're just trusting Google a little more with a little more of your stuff. And if Google goes down, not that Google will go down, but like you go to a public library and now you have to sign into Chrome, that bother that that bothers me. Uh, from there, I do like Keychain, but that means you're tied to iOS everything. And unfortunately, nobody uses Firefox, but I do like Firefox. Uh, and one it's password a... is awesome. Consider the the chicken and egg problem. So if uh, if you do end up using Chrome's built-in password manager and password storage features, you can totally do that. Just keep in mind that if your Google password is that big, long 64 character random string that you've stored in your existing password manager, you, you might need your Google account credentials to open up the password manager that's hosted on Google. So just be careful the order in which you do these things because you don't want to lock yourself out. At the very least, if you are going to use Chrome, either have a password that you are absolutely not going to forget for your Google account, um, or find another password manager to store your Google password and then store the key for that one on the sticky note on your monitor. Maybe don't do that last yes. bit. Well, the one thing I do want to say is I... I Way before LastPass came out, Keeper was the gold standard. Uh, is it Keeper? KeePass, sorry. Keeper is another one, which is, I think, okay. But KeePass was the gold standard. It is, I, it's not that I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it for people listening to this show. You have to take care of that database file. So when people say, I'm only using KeePass and that's it, that's not a, you ha you have to keep synchronized your password data field that is not simple and and if and again if that's your only choice then that's your only choice but stick with LastPass in that case because uh because KeyPass is very difficult to manage because you are now the steward of that if you need that security that's a different story but if you're listening to the show and need that security, you know what you're doing already and you can make your own mind there. But stick, I would find one of the cloud-based ones for it. Uh, if you have money, 1Password is beautiful, like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Bitwarden is there. It's not as pretty, but it it's very functional and we like it and it's open source. And, like, and I do like the sharing of passwords features with the organization and the two-factor codes and everything else. And you're going to say, well, how does 1Password and uh, the other one and Bitwarden keep these? Uh, what do they do differently? And I think that I think it's what you said. They up the key derivation function. I know 1Password has a secret key that gets added to the password. Um, I don't exactly know how that works, but it's a slightly different, and it does protect you a little more. Uh, Bitwarden, again, does not ECB, does the other one that you were saying. And and again, keeps that uh, key derivation number really high. So it does help you there. Now, I think we you, Tom was going to explain to us, are you, are you a, can you be a victim of this LastPass breach? And, and I, I want to start saying is maybe, not really, yes. but maybe. Yeah, maybe is the right term here. Um, so, like, if if you have an account with, like, a .mil or a .gov email address, you are probably one of the first targets, if not the first target, for people looking to crack LastPass vaults. Because uh, you're presumably an important person. You have access to important stuff, and they want to get that access, too. Um, if you are storing uh, cryptocurrency wallet private keys anywhere... Um, 
yeah, those have absolutely been hit already. Um, the the one thing to keep in mind is the strength of the key in a big a big part of the strength of the encrypted vaults. Even though they were lost, even though LastPass did a lot of dumb things, even though your PBKDF2 iterations might not be as big as they should be, still the, the crux of the issue relies on the strength of your master password. So if you had a big, long, hyper-complicated password, big passphrase thing, like a sentence in length, should you worry? I'd still change the mission-critical stuff, but... If it were me, like my my throwaway Discord thing that I got on to join that one server one time, it, whatever. I don't care. It gets hacked, whatever. I reset the password with my email address. Um, but if if your password was just like, my favorite dog is Bill, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd worry about that. I'd start changing way more things and I'd, I'd change them fast. Not necessarily because you specifically are going to be targeted, but the way a lot of these password cracking farms work is on scale. So they're going to say, hey, for all of these things, try all of these simple passwords that we know about across the internet and see which ones unlock. You're just jiggling tumblers on, on the locks and hoping that one pops randomly by accident. And if it does, cool. You got yourself a nice prize of some person's passwords. So it does really depend on your master password and how much you trust that. Um, don't go to Twitter or even our signal group and post your master password and say, is this good or not? Uh, just, you know, use common sense. So, so we have a few minutes left. I was going to say what I did over break, mainly because I was bored at 2 a.m. one of these nights, was I did go through and Bitwarden and LastPass has the feature to check weak passwords and to check against have I been pwned and everything else. And I just ran it there. And i surprised to say that a majority of my passwords were really cr one of the crazy generated passwords. I was very happy with that. The one thing that did scare me is in my secure notes, I have the the backup codes to all my devices, which is not which is not good. They should be in your wallet, your your physical wallet, or in a safe deposit box or whatever. But it wasn't. So turns out, if you go to, I think all the websites I went to, you can just change the backup codes. You don't have to take off the two factor and put it back on. Uh, so, so that was really helpful to me. Went to Facebook, went to Twitter, went to Instagram, went to, I guess, WhatsApp and some of the others. And I did that. Uh, I did the Mac recovery code. I checked that. And then I went through, like you said, I, I started with the highest prize targets, the, the banks, the, the things that deal with money, changed all those. If they had two factor, I went through and turned it on. I will say now that. I'm starting to really, really hate two-factor because it's on 40, 50, 60 sites. It's like I'm constantly having to add. Uh, but like you said, if you if you take the time to do it, it's not that hard. And turns out a lot of my passwords were already strong. Now, if you haven't started with the password manager, uh, we will, again, recommend Bitward and recommend 1Password. And I told this to everyone who wants to listen. Start slow. Start, install it, install it everywhere. If you didn't install it, install it there too. And then you have your password. Don't make it crazy long. Take your normal password and just add it. Just add every password that you have as you go through, as you do everything. Let it just, just add there. And then one day, maybe February 1st, March 1st, whatever, say, you know what? I'm not going to remember any passwords and let it fill for you. Just let it do it. And after you get comfortable there, maybe again, another 30 days, another 60 days, then start changing all your passwords. And we'll do a deeper dive on a different show. This was, this last pass thing happened right before Christmas. It's, it's very timely. We want people to hear about it. But as you start doing that, then you can go to these crazy passwords. And like you said, I, all my passwords are crazy long. They are in the, have I been pwned, but guess what? I'm not that worried. Uh, I guess I could change them, but for right now, like I said, start with the mission critical stuff and move on from there. So add two factor to those that you can, the, the ones that you care about. Like, you, I don't think you need to add two factor to your Gawker password. Like maybe they like, take but if they the, offer the stupid, it. I, 
And then we, we will eventually do a show on pass keys because that's coming up. Uh, there's a lot more details there, but doing something on pass keys, which will be the next iteration of all this. But for right, but for right now, I absolutely, if you have some time, move off of LastPass, uh, find Bitwarden, find 1Password, do the export, do the import. I will say, I kept my private key in a secure note, and Bitwarden didn't like something with more than 10,000 characters, and that's what I had to fix. So if your secure notes have more than 10,000 characters, which is a lot, but a few private keys there will do it to, to you, uh, you... What I did is I just, I copied, put him somewhere else, imported, and it worked. Yeah, so that's literally the exact problem I ran into. So my strategy was to, I took all of those, because it's a big CSV that LastPass gives you in the, the export. So you take your super long private notes, copy them to a different Excel window, open office window, whatever, right? a different spreadsheet file. Save them as a separate CSV file. Delete the rows from the LastPass export. Save that, close it, import it to Bitwarden. Bitwarden will allow you to upload files as attachments to password manager entries. So I just created one called LastPass CSV. I drug the file in there, I saved it, and now I've still got all my old secure notes in a really weird and kind of awkward to use CSV format, but they're there and they're encrypted. Um, yeah, yeah. The one other thing I wanted to say, because I've already heard this from a couple people now, uh, is, wow, Tom, all the eggs in one basket in the last pass got hacked. I bet you're not recommending password managers anymore. And that is absolutely not true. Um, because when, when you take a look at risk profiles and what the majority of users are going to be exposed to, it's stuff like password reuse. Like, hey, they, they commented on a recipe blog and they had to make an account and it was the same account as their, their Facebook account and that one got compromised because it's some site run out of nowhere with not a security team. Um, and now they're sending spam and malware to their grandmother on Facebook. Like, that's... That is a very normal risk profile, and that's the majority of stuff that happens. A government actor or a group of super hackers attacking your specific LastPass vault is a really rare thing. Yes, it happened. Uh, yes, the vaults were stolen, and yeah, they are working on cracking passwords right now. And yes, this could happen with any password manager company. But the risk profile for that across a standard amount of time is way, way less likely to happen than the normal attacks on passwords that we see every day. And password managers are designed to thwart the big ones, the main stuff that happens. Then I will leave you with, if you're unsure, the last, the last call, if you're unsure, watch out for phishing emails because if they do have two factor codes they're going to want them so be ready for phishing emails more phishing emails more spam uh you're already used to that just be on the lookout we can talk about that at a different time anyway we are over the non-time limit that now we don't have to deal with but anyway uh i will just say last call to if you have if you're not listening to this on the short www.shortexplanations.com that's where you want to go you want to listen to it you want to subscribe there and if you want a single group the good news about the new website at the bottom of every show note i can put our email and i can say hey if you want in you can email us and we will get back to you and so so again we we are really happy. We made a good choice moving. And again, follow us on the other stuff. And we will, I guess, hopefully see you next week. I think we have content now for a good, a good long stretch of shows. So with that said, we will see everyone hopefully next week. Bye, everybody. See everyone.